Why bother designing a website twice? Why design it in Figma and then reboot the whole thing again inside of no code? What if I was to tell you that you don't need to design it twice and that you can still design in Figma? Now, I think it's worth saying that if you're a solo designer, you don't need to get team sign-offs, then you could probably get away with skipping the Figma part if that improves your workflow. But if you are working with clients and you are working with various teammates and the whole Figma to no code process is still slowing you down, then you're skirting really close to failure. And I can guarantee you it comes down to two things. And before we get started, I wanna thank Wix Studio for sponsoring this video. We're gonna take a deeper dive into their Figma to Wix Studio plugin later on in this episode. But with regards to skipping the Figma process, in my opinion, your creativity is by far and away unmatched when it comes to just focusing all your attention inside of Figma, without having to worry about the styling, the CSS, how you're gonna achieve something in layout. Arguably in Figma, it's so easy to move things around, experiment with new ideas, create iterations, and explore variations side by side. Figma is the ultimate playground for experimentation and exploration. And although auto layout is a beast, I do recommend not starting with it during this experimentation phase. The idea is to get what's in your head onto the screen as quickly as possible. And in the same way, I think building it directly in the no code tool is slowing you down. I think auto layout is probably slowing you down as well. I might be controversial in saying this, but I think your creativity is at its best when you're locked into that design flow without worrying about how to achieve something in code. But I might hear you say, Samuel, I already do this. I design things in Figma and then I rebuild it in my no code tool. And it's still a pain to do. So what have you got for me? Well, during the Figma process, it all comes down to basically gaining consensus with your teammates, with your clients. And if you've got a job, you're full time, then it's about communicating that to your superiors. And having an organized design process is a surefire way to not having your clients push back on your ideas because you're presenting them and taking them along the, the logical flow of how you came to the conclusion of your design. Last year, I released something called Figma Boilerplate, which is a project organization framework, which I use in my company that promises to ensure a robust sign-off process. You can download that for free in the description below. Something we promote in Figma Boilerplate that I see a lot of designers getting wrong is using the default frame sizes inside of Figma. Creating your frames, depending on your no-code tool, is crucial, and this will definitely come in later on in the tutorial. Once you've got your design signed off, it's time to then transfer that to your no-code tool. And this is where it gets interesting because pretty much every no-code tool has a Figma to no-code tool plugin and Wix Studio is no exception. So to add a plugin, you'll click on the plugins and search for whatever plugin you need. I'm going to search for Wix Studio and add it to my project. First, you need to sync this file with Wix Studio. So we'll copy this file's URL and paste it into tools and import from Figma. Now we're able to select frames or entire pages within the Figma and paste them into Wix Studio. But before we do that, we need to import the styles. This will mean your designs won't adopt Wix Studio's default styling when you copy them into your no-code tool. One of Wix Studio's unique attributes is to scale proportionately. Now, I'm personally not a fan of this, so I switch it off, and I do that especially for typography, but this is personal preference to you. And now we can move on to the pages. Again, Figma Boilerplate encourages you to create your frames the size of the no-code tool that you're using. And in our case, the sizes are 1280. And you can see this in Wix Studio at the top of the page. I found that in Figma, the frames that aren't in any other frames work best. And you can do this by double checking the inferred size in the Wix Studio plugin. If it looks crazy off, make sure your frame is just not within any other frames. It's kind of the root frame as it were. Now by selecting the plugin and resyncing with Wix Studio, we can see the selected frame is available to paste and it's simply a case of doing this for your pages. You can also do this at a component level, but remember that anything less than 1001 pixels is going to be copied as a stack. You now need to adjust your design at the various breakpoints inside of Wix Studio, but so much of that heavy lifting has been done. So you can see, regardless of the platform as a designer, you can achieve pixel-perfect websites using the tool that you're most familiar with and Figma to Wix Studio's plugin. Now, I personally think there's a big incentive for no-code platforms to encourage you to use their Figma 2 plugin, just because it significantly lowers the barrier to entry to using their tool. If they can get people using their tool and not have to worry about the designer process in that, you can just use Figma, then you're more likely to use their tool. So for the sake of you and your clients, 
design your website inside of Figma using Figma boilerplate and Wix Studio's Figma to Wix Studio plugin. Thanks again for Wix Studio for supporting this video, allowing me to do deep dives into these topics and sharing them with you. Links are in the description. And until next time, happy no coding.